Pokemon Hunger Games. We're going to gather multiple districts of Pokemon and lock them together on a map, taking turns to try to survive till the finish, where the last Pokemon standing wins. It is time to get into the first ever Pokemon Hunger Games, and I think we need to take a look at all of our contestants. Starting from District 1, we've got Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. Then coming into District number 2, we have Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile. District 3, we're rocking Trico, Torchic, and Mudkip. District 4, we got Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. Now District 5, we've got Snivy, Tepic, and Oshawott. District 6 consists of Chespin, Fennekin, and Froakie. District 7 consists of Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio. District 8 has Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble. And last but not least, District 9 has Sprigatito, Fuecoco, and Quaxley. Make sure you guys comment below who you want to win this whole video. But it is time. Let's get into it. Round one. I'm going to go over how each round is going to work in round one. And then we'll kind of speed up the process as we go. First off, for every round, we have to randomize the turn order to see who goes first in their actions. Okay, here we go. We've got all of our starters on this list. Let's randomize it. And this is going to be the order for round number one. Let's start it out with a Rowlet. Next up, how we go about our turn is each Mon will get to select an action. Here are our four options. They can fight a random Pokemon that also is in the same section as them. They can flee, which causes them to run away and leave to a different section. They can upgrade. They have to stay in their section, but they're going to get an upgrade, whether it's an item, a TM, EVs, or something to make them slightly stronger or they can ally, which is gonna cut the chance in half of a certain Pokemon attacking them. So it is time to spin the wheel for Rowlet. What is Rowlet going to do? Turn number one, Rowlet's a fighter. We're gonna see our first fight in Pokemon Hunger Games. We just have to choose its opponent. There's only two options to start. Obviously this will all change as they leave their sections. Rowlet, oh boy, Rowlet's not in a safe spot. Rowlet's either going to fight Fennekin or Litten. That opponent is going to be Fennekin. Let's get into our first fight of Pokemon Hunger Games. Here we go. It is time to get into the first battle. We have Fennekin. We have Rowlet. And sadly for Rowlet, I don't think there's going to be an upset anyone. Like, th no upsets in the first round at all. But I could be wrong. Starting it off, Fennekin's gonna go for Scratch. Critical hit, and it did that little. Rowlet, you didn't do that much either. Oh boy, this might be a long fight. Turn two, Fennekin scratches again. Still very minimal damage. It's about equal, and Fennekin did get a critical hit, so no embers, and Rowlet, you might stand a shot. Turn three, Fennekin finally goes for Ember. Rowlet barely hangs on, uses Leafage. Does about the same amount of damage. Somehow, Rally, you need to hang on, and I don't think that's possible anymore. But here we go. Fennekin uses Scratch, and Rowlet is gone. The first turn, and one Pokemon gone. 26 Pokemon remain. Let's get in to these next couple rounds. Snivy is going second, and luckily for Snivy, both of its opponents are water types, so no matter who it fights, it should be nice and easy. And it looks like we're going to get a Snivy versus Froakie. So sorry to all you Froakie fans here. That This might be it. So I might get proven wrong immediately. Froakie, past Gen 6, the Mons get their elemental moves at level 5. Here's the thing. Snivy only has one attacking stat. And it's not a grass move. So Froakie, your opportunity to pull an upset is right here right now turn one froakie's faster that's huge pound a little bit of damage kind of looks like it does more snivy might have the attack advantage froakie might just have worse defenses turn two froakie pounds again we're getting there we're getting there okay maybe it's exactly the same and i just cannot see Turn three, Froakie Water Gun. That does worse, Froakie. You're going to want to not use Water Gun. But it still looks pretty even. 
Longest fight so far. Water gun again. Seven HP left for Snivy. Froki is in red. Is this the end of Froki? Froki uses water gun. Ooh, Snivy. Snivy in the red. Snivy uses tackle and Froki goes down. The upset was not completed. Another Pokemon has been eliminated. 25 remain. Next up on our list, Fue Coco got the ally action. And it is going to be Fue Coco and Grookey the allies. We've got another ally coming up. Trico also happened to roll the ally. Which, if it can get Charmander, that would be nice. Trico's going to ally with Squirtle. Next up, we have Oshawott. Oshawott got upgrade. Oshawott's going to roll. Eevee's plus 20 and all. Sick. Fennekin also, after surviving, rolls an upgrade and is going to get plus 20 and all Eevees. Chimchar rolled the ally. Okay. Chimchar could also pair up with Fue Coco. Chimchar is going to ally with Fue Coco. Cool. We are getting our first flea. Our boy Sobble is next up on the order, and Sobble is going to flee. Sobble is going to flee in upwards. Based on that, is actually going to be up and the grass, the top biome with Bulbasaur, Chespin, and Chikorita. Our boy Charmander is going to upgrade. Charmander is going to get Eevees as well. We've got back-to-back -back Fleers. First is going to be Score Bunny. Second up is going to be Sprigatito. And here is the updated map after their movements. And finally, we're back to another fight. We're going to have Poplio fight two fire types. And Poplio should have a water move. And Poplio's opponent's going to be... Tepig. Poor Tepig. Here we go, battle number three of the Hunger Games. Poplio Tepig. This battle should just be over pretty quickly. Turn one. Poplio's faster. Pound doesn't do too much. Tepig? About the same. Poplio has the speed advantage and a certain move advantage. And we're going to get that move. Poplio water guns. And bam. Tepig. It's a critical hit, but the crit, I'm telling you, does not matter. And as expected, Tepig, it's a speed tie. Is going to drop to the water gun. Wow. As expected, Tepic was going to drop to that water gun. And Tepic has been eliminated. And let's continue. Turtwig is up next and is going to flee. Bulbasaur is going to end up allying with Sobble. Chikorita is going to ally with Chespin. Ooh, we got a little two-way alliance up here. Piplup's going to flee. Grookey's going to end up in a new alliance, this time with Scorbunny. Quaxley's going to flee, which means everyone has left the bottom area, eliminating that area off the map. With Quaxley leaving that area and being the last Pokemon there, it is going to activate a little twist. As soon as any area is inhabited by zero Pokemon, that area will be cut off the map and removed, where no Pokemon can go back there. Cyndaquil's up next, and Cyndaquil's going to fight only having one opponent. Poplio might end up taking down both of the fire types. Okay, another fight time. And this one should go pretty quickly. Yo, Cyndaquil looks so cool. Cyndaquil's faster, tackles, barely any damage. Water gun. Yep. Ooh, just like that, another Pokemon's going to get eliminated by the hands of Poplio's water gun. Insanity. Got another fight happening. This time it's going to be Litten taking on Fennekin as well. Fennekin's going to have to go back-to-back -back fights. 
Now, this fight should be a little more fair. Fennekin, Litten, both of them have the exact same moveset. Scratch. And then we're going to get a Scratch. Ember. Fennekin barely holding on. And after so many back and forth hits, Fennekin lands the critical hit and gets the dub, eliminating... The Fire Kitten Litten. 22 Pokemon remain. Next up, Mudkip is going to flee. Really filling up the top area of the map. Without too much of a break, we are going to get another act of violence, Torchic. And it is time for another round of fighting. Our boy Torchic is going to be attacking Quaxley. Quaxley left one area just to get attacked immediately. And very handily, the water bird is going to knock out the OG fire bird. Wow. These new Pokemon have a strong advantage to start round one when they're only level five. Torchic's gone. Eliminate it from the map. But if you thought Quaxley was going to get out of there free, Totodile is now going to follow up and also attack the Quaxley. Quaxley might be at a weakened state. Can Quaxley handle back-to-back -back fights? It is time for battle number seven of the round one, where Totodile might actually have the advantage by not having a water move, because no chance of clicking water gun against a water type. But will that matter? Quaxley goes first. Water Gun, like I said, that's very little damage. A Scratch doesn't do much, but it is, I would argue, still a little bit better. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of close. Ah, I was going to say maybe better than Quaxley clicking Pound. But I don't know. We're going to have to see as they get further down in HP. It does indeed look like Totodile does have the slight advantage. It's not much. Speed might be a bigger advantage depending on how these damages roll out. And close Water Gun. Ooh, Totodile's hanging on by a lot. And one more turn. Can Quaxley somehow pull through two fights in a row? Pound! Totodile lives! Totodile scratches. Quaxley has been eliminated. It could not handle back-to-back -back fights. Less than 20 Pokemon remain. 19 Pokemon now remain on the map. Southside's getting a little empty. We do have a couple Mons left before the round ends. Squirtle is going to get to upgrade and get a TM. And is going to pick up the TM Ice Beam. Squirtle has that coverage. Will it be enough to like pull through late against some of these pesky grass type Pokemon that are in its little area? And the last person of round one, Chespin, is going to ally with Bulbasaur. But round one is done. Here is a picture of our map. Here is all of our remaining starter Pokemon and the Pokemon that they are allied with. And yes, while the fights did seem one-sided the first round, everything is going to change in round two because every single Pokemon on this map remaining will gain 10 levels going into round two. It's now time to get into day two of our Pokemon Hunger Games. And after the bloodbath, of day one, we get a more peaceful day. Starting us off, Grookey is going to ally with the last possible member, and probably a very smart decision, Monferno, the only starter that evolved between days. Next up, Chikorita is going to get 20 EVs in every single stat. Charmander is gonna get a new ally in Trico. Sobble is going to flee the top area. Poplio is going to stay put, upgrade, and get the TM Ice Beam as well. Monferno saw Sobble appear and was like, I'm out. I've got to flee. And goes up north where Sobble came from. 
And as soon as Monferno got there, Chespin decided to make an alliance with Monferno. Oshawott and Bulbasaur both fled. And finally, we get a fight. Snivy decided to take on Piplup. Here we go. First fight of day two, Piplup versus Snivy. And yes, Snivy has the type advantage, but Piplup has a beak. And you know what that beak can do. Starting the fight off, Snivy's going to use Wrap. Some residual damage, solid. Not a lot of damage though, and Piplup, like I said, Peck. Actually, that did quite a bit. Whoa, Piplup, do you have a shot at this? Uh, I don't know, that Wrap also did a ton after the fact. But it's not going to be easy for Piplup because the Vine Whip is going to come through. And if Snivy keeps using Vine Whip, this fight should be over next round. Does Piplup have a chance? Snivy uses Vine Whip and Piplup is knocked out. Our first fallen Pokemon of day two. But now back for more peacefulness. Sprigatito's going to also flee. Squirtle's going to upgrade again this time getting another tm bro squirtle's gonna be too strong squirtle's gonna pick up zen headbutt to go along with its already got an ice beam turtwig is next up getting an upgrade picking up a tm of its own turtwig's gonna learn crunch to give it another powerful physical move giving itself some coverage maybe against a couple of these pokemon Next up, we got two Pokemon deciding to flee. Totodile and Scorbunny. Fuecoco is going to form another alliance, this time with Sobble. Smart decision, Fuecoco. Mudkip and Fennekin are both fleeing. And our final Pokemon for day two, Trico is going to upgrade and teach itself a TM as well. Learning Acrobatics. Day two wraps up with a lot of movement and peace, but the end of this day brings something big. Evolutions across the board. So day three, if there are fights being done, they should get pretty insane. It is now the start of day three and the map has completely changed. Every Pokemon is now in its middle stage and hey, these newfound powers might have stirred some fight amongst all of the members remaining. But let's get into it. Starting us off, we got Grottle, who is going to just take an upgrade, giving itself EVs in every single stat. And like I said, this new power has brought some fight, and Brakeson's going to be the first to fight in day three. Deciding to take on Ivysaur. Oh boy, is this time to say goodbye to Ivysaur. Let's get into the fight. The first battle of day three. Can Ivysaur hang on against Brakeson? This is going to be an uphill fight, but maybe. Just maybe. Starting it off, Brakeson's going to use Psybeam. Ooh, Ivysaur kind of took that for being super effective. How much does Seed Bomb do? Nothing. Turn two, Brakeson's going to Psybeam again. And one more shot should knock the Ivysaur out. Is that a crit? Did a bunch of damage, not a crit. Ivysaur. I think he did better than I thought. In turn three, Brakeson's gonna hit it with a Psybeam again. Ivysaur. Good fight, but you've been eliminated. Next up, we got a couple Pokemon fleeing. We got Grovile and Drizzile fleeing their current location. Now it is time for another fight. Monferno is going to attack. And even though it is allies with Quilladin, it is going to attack Quilladin. The betrayal has begun. Okay, time for another fight on day three. The big bulky Quilladin. Yo, his sprite looks kind of, or his art looks kind of nice in this game. Versus Monferno, the fire monkey. Who, who will win? I don't know. I feel like Quilladin might be able to tank a couple hits. But I don't know how much damage he's dealing back. Starting it out, Monferno's mock punching. That's not doing much, Monferno. You're going to need to use a fire move, especially if Quilladin's putting you on a timer. Didn't do much right now, but that's eventually going to add up. 
Monferno Mach punches again. A little bit of damage, but Rollout is going to do even more. They're about even right now. Turn three, Monferno Mach punches again. Are you trying to lose this fight? Because Rollout. Oh my. Is Monferno going to lose? Turn four. Possibly the final turn. Monferno Flame Wheels finally knocking out the Quilladin. It was just messing around with its food. That was just a little risky, Monferno. You might want to... You might want to hold back on that type of stuff next time. But there we go. An alliance broken up. Quilladin has been eliminated. We've got another Pokemon changing its locations. Raboot is fleeing from its little section. Going up north to join more fire types. Couldn't go without a fight. Thwacky is now going to attack, which could be a little sketchy because it's attacking in a land of fire Pokemon. Who are you attacking? The grass type decides it's going to test its odds against the only water type in the land, Marsh Stomp. Marsh Stomp is one powerful Pokemon, but it was going to have to face its greatest weakness eventually, grass type Pokemon. And I think, honestly, one hit might actually do the trick and just knock Marsh Stomp out of here. Let's see, Thwacky goes first, Razor Leaf, and yep, Marsh Stomp, it's a critical hit. Did the crit matter? Most likely not. You've been eliminated. The grass Pokemon really have been dominating. 16 Pokemon remain. After watching that happen, Crocolore is going to stay put and upgrade itself, granting it 20 EVs in every stat. War Turtle is then going to ally with Charmeleon. Powerful Generation 1 alliance right here. Florgato is going to flee, heading up north. Do what? Duat is also going to flee, leaving this bottom section of the map, causing it to be blacked out because there are no Pokemon remaining. But as soon as Duat gets there, Croconaw attacks. But not Duat. Croconaw attacks Brione. As we near the end of day three, we've got two water types about to battle it out. Brione versus Croconaw. Could be a tough fight. I'm not sure who would actually win this one. Turn one, Croconaw's faster, uses Bite. Not too much damage. It's not a fairy yet, so it doesn't resist. Bubble Beam follows up, and that does nothing. Oh boy, we're in for this fight. Croconaw then uses Ice Fang. It is faster, so flinches. A crit. No flinch. Brion is going to use Ice Beam. Does about, if not more than Bubble Beam. Dang. Turn three of the fight. Croconaw flails. Wow. Croconaw, I expected more damage from you. Wow, Brione, I expected more damage from you. This is a stall fight. That Ice Fang still did nothing. No flinches. This voice, still no damage at all. Wow, they're really not fighting hard. Aqua Jet, also nothing. Water Gun, also nothing. Oh my who will win this fight? Here we go. Aqua Jet again. Croconaw barely hangs on. Responds with a bite. Brione hangs on. What is going to happen? And it ended all. Croconaw goes faster, hits the Ice Fang, and knocks out Brione. That is another Pokemon eliminated. And just like that, we are down to 15 Pokemon. We got a few more turns to wrap up day three. And it is all three Pokemon fleeing. First up is Servine. He's going to flee to where the fight just took place. That, that flea knocks off another location. Next up is Charmeleon fleeing. And lastly, we have Bayleaf fleeing. Going into the very full East Coast. That wraps up day three. 15 Pokemon remain. The alliances are shifting as people backstab their friends. But trust me, it's just going to get better. It is time for day four. And this day could get crazy. Like half the starters evolved before 35 or on 35. The other half are still in their little middle stage and they're weak. So there could be some big fights here. Like even Pokemon that might have the type advantage might be at a disadvantage. But we're going to start it off. Charmeleon is going to go first, and he's going to get an upgrade. 
and that upgrade is going to be 20 EVs in every stat. And then after that upgrade, we're going to have War Turtle flee. There's only one direction War Turtle can go, joining his buddies. Another location blocked off, shrinking the map even more. And Inteleon is also going to flee. And Inteleon goes south, joining Torterra. Our next Pokemon to do something is, is Rillaboom. He's going to upgrade, and he's going to get 20 EVs in each stat as well. But peace does not continue. And we're going to have our first fight of day four, Brakeson going on the offensive and although Brakeson has the type advantage over a lot of these mons two of those mons are fully evolved Brakeson's gonna have to face not even something it's effective against Cinderace could this spell the end of Brakeson here is the first fight of day four and Cinderace truly has the advantage here stat wise move wise like Brakeson I don't think stands a chance started off Cinderace headbutts and that did a lot of damage. And breaks in just a scratch. That does nothing. Like this battle is going to go over pretty quick. The double kick. Not too much. But still after two kicks that's a bit. And still. Ember. What is what is breaks going to do back? That does a little bit more. Side beam probably would have been the best thing you could have chosen. But Cinderace might handle it here. Gets the headbutt and knocks breaks in out. Breaks in challenged Cinderace and could not win. That is another Pokemon eliminated. 14 remain. One fight was not enough for Alligator. On the other side of the map is gonna go offensive and it's facing down two middle stage Pokemon. This is the advantage that I talked about. Even though Servine has the type effectiveness, is it strong enough? But that's not gonna matter because for Alligator is gonna actually go against Duat. Here we go, another fight where Duat, the not fully evolved Mon, is at a disadvantage. But, I will say for Alligator's moveset isn't the greatest. Starting us off, for Alligator is going to go for Flail, which does nothing when you're that weak. And, okay, about the same amount of damage, Duat. You need to do better than that. How are you going to respond? For Alligator goes for Crunch. Also, surprised it only did that little as well. Come on, for alligator. Here we go. Like I said, for alligator only has water gun as its water move. And that did nothing. Whereas Duwat gets like razor shell. Did nothing too, but still, it's kind of close. For alligator is gonna go for flail again, which does slightly more. But Duwat water pulse putting for alligator in the yellow. This fight is way too close. For alligator flails again. Duwat hangs on. Fury cutter. That did nothing, bro. Duwat do better. Duwa did better. For Alligator did better. They both would have done something. For Alligator flails again, knocking Duwat out. And yeah, that was the whole situation just had to do with Duwat was not fully evolved. And Duwat, you've been eliminated. The map has lost another member. Next up on the list is Monferno, and Monferno is getting an upgrade. And that upgrade just happens to be an item. Since this is different, I'm actually going to show this wheel spin. These are the items that we gave off in our last Imperialism episode, so their effects are still working the same. So if you guys have never seen that episode, please be sure to go back, watch that episode. I explain what each item does, and Infernape, well, soon to be Infernape, Monferno is going to get Metronome. And it just causes the next move, the previously used move, to have a higher chance of being chosen. Now, today's fighting is not over this time, we're going to get Torterra's action. And Torterra is going to fight Inteleon. Which, type advantage, yes. But Torterra is also neutral to water moves. So this could be a good fight. Pokemon are starting to get very aggressive as we jump into the third fight in Day 4. Inteleon, Torterra. And Torterra has the clear advantage, but I don't think you can count the, the little... Chameleon out. Starting it off, Inteleon's faster. Snipe shot. That's some big damage. Razor Leaf. Ooh, Inteleon, you cannot live another one. Inteleon's gonna have to do something crazy. Goes for U turn. That does even less. Oh no. Is it over? Goodbye, Inteleon. You fought well, 
but you've been eliminated. And Torterra keeps claim on this middle section that no one has been able to take off of him. And Servine, who watched for Alligator's fight, was like, hey, I want to partner with you. And those two have formed an alliance. Next up is Floragato, who is upgrading. Floragato is going to receive an item as well. That item just happens to be leftovers. Okay, Floragato is not the most bulky thing, but it could still use some leftovers. And our next action has two Pokemon fleeing. First off being Crocolore. And Crocolore escapes and goes off into the land of Torterra. What are you doing, Crocolore? You know what happened to the last one that did that? And the next Pokemon that happens to flee is Meganium to the middle as well. Ooh, Torterra's not alone anymore. But now it's time for a twist. Our boy Grovile is going on the offensive and attacking one of his two allies. Both of them have stuck with Grovile for a while, but Grovile decided to fight. Grovile is taking on Charmeleon. Two middle stage mons at least. Should be at least a fair fight on the stats. Charmeleon feels so betrayed right now. The alliance they had was strong, but Grovile decided to betray it, possibly at the worst time. They were still middle stage, probably needed to wait one more day just to get a little bit stronger, but here we go. Starting it off, Grovile's faster goes for Giga Drain. That's not bad damage for being neutral effective, but Charmeleon's just gonna bite and almost knock it out in one hit. I said Charmeleon was angry. Grovile acrobatics, decent damage, but no. Charmeleon was not gonna let it just go over easy. Charmeleon was mad. Charmeleon continues on. Grovile, you've been eliminated. 11 Pokemon remain. We're almost done with day four, but there is one more thing that needs to be done on. That needs to get done, and Cinderace is fleeing. So here is the new map with all the surviving Pokemon up to day four. It's still very, very close on what could happen, which Mon is pulling away. Honestly, none of them. They're all about even, especially after this next day when all of them are going to be fully evolved starters battling at their best abilities. Here we go, day number five now, and it is all downhill from here. All Pokemon are fully evolved. We've got 11 Pokemon left. This, the battles are just going to get intense. Like, we're going to get some more level ups. They're going to get better moves, but these Pokemon cannot get much stronger than they already are. So, let's get into day five. And starting us off, we've got Cinderace, and Cinderace is going to flee up north joining Meowskarada and Rillaboom next up Torterra is going to get its first ally Torterra will ally with Skeledurge but like I said it is going to get intense and just like that we have our boy Charizard attacking its ally one of its few allies remaining one of its only allies remaining, Blastoise. The Betrayal, they survived together for so long, but only one Gen 1 Pokemon will remain. Let's get into it. Blastoise versus Charizard. And Charizard is definitely at a disadvantage here, but I wouldn't say it's completely over. Charizard does have one move that it can abuse that could potentially earn it the win. Starting us off, Charizard goes for the move Air Slash. Do we get some flinches? We do not. The Aqua Tail hits. Ooh, that's big damage. Charizard, you're going to have to pull something crazy off to win. Turn number two. Charizard goes for Air Slash again. A flinch? No. Aqua Tail connects again, and Charizard goes down. Charizard is eliminated. Because of that one big fight, a bunch of Pokemon are going to flee. Starting us off, we have Meganium, who flees to the right. Joining Blastoise, where the battle just happened. Interesting choice. Then we have Meowskarada, fleeing a little south. Also 
joining Blastoise in the game? Are they wanting to jump into the action? They know Blastoise might be a little weakened. Then we have Superior Fling in the only way possible, joining Infernape on the top of the map. And then for Alligator follows, which means another area is gone. We are down to just four areas left on the map. And lastly, to get away from the bloodshed, Blastoise is also fleeing. But bad news, the fighting is not over. We have Skeledurge attacking Torterra. Immediately after Torterra forms that alliance, another betrayal today has been created. Time for another fight. We have Torterra versus Skeledurge. And although Skeledurge has the initial type advantage being a fire type, Torterra has stab that hits super effective, so maybe, maybe this battle will be closer than what someone might think. But starting it off, Skeledurge is faster, goes for the Torch Song. This might be huge. Okay, was that, that, that was a critical hit, but that was a one shot. I don't know if that even mattered. Wow, Torterra, you've been betrayed immediately after you formed an alliance with Skeledurge. Torterra has fallen and nine remain with just two more Pokemon left to choose their moves before the end of the turn. And next off, we have Infernape forming an alliance. And Infernape makes an alliance with Feraligator. And then lastly, Rillaboom goes and Rillaboom chooses to fight. Will Rillaboom betray its alliance? Or will it attack Blastoise, who has already gone against someone, and it chooses to attack Cinderace, its ally? Oh my, this day has been full of betrayal. Another Pokemon is going to go down. So Rillaboom's going on the offensive here versus Cinderace, but I don't know if that's the best idea. Cinderace definitely has the speed and type advantage over Rillaboom. Like I said... Speed and type advantage in the end is going to be very, very clutch on who wins each fight. And starting us off, Cinderace is going for Pyro Ball, and that just does it. Is there a crit? No. Rillaboom, done. The betrayals, although it worked once this round, most of them did not succeed. There we go. Just eight Pokemon left remaining in the Hunger Games. As we go on to day six, where everyone will be level 45. I don't know some moves some moves could get clutch as they continue to level up but let's just move on into the next day it's now time for day six eight pokemon remain three fire three grass two water if you're cheering for a type it's still any type left remaining but let's get into it and starting us off we have meganium taking on meowscarada the first fight of day six, Meowskarada definitely has the advantage. It's more of an offensive mon going for attacks, and it does have leftovers. You cannot forget about that. Meganium is tanky, might be able to tank a few hits, but it is lacking in the move options. Starting it off, Meowskarada goes for Night Slash. That's not a lot of damage. How, how does Petal Blizzard do? Slightly less, I would say. And Petal Blizzard's a strong move. And leftovers. Meowskarada is just going to be able to heal some of that up, especially because it's going to protect next turn. Like I said, Meowskarada has that free protect to just survive. Recover, not take any damage. Then it can fire off a strong hit while Meganium just sits there. Essentially powerless to do anything. Here we go. Meowskarada Night Slashes again. Just still a little bit. Meganium is in the yellow. Meowskarada is still going to be in the green. And this next turn of health is just not going to do much. Here we go again. Night Slash again. No crit. Meganium holds on in red. But I think that... Oh! That was a crit. That was not a crit. That was just good damage from Meganium. I'm going to say, Meganium doing some decent damage. But it might be too late for that. Meowskarada protects again. Gaining more HP recovery. This is probably going to be the last turn. Meowskarada goes for a U-turn. Knocking Meganium out. Meganium. The challenger has fallen. We are down to seven Pokemon remaining. 
and we are not free from fights. Infernape is going to challenge one of the two Pokemon, one being its ally, which this does stink for, for Alligator because both of those Pokemon are for Alligator's alliance, but Infernape will not backstab this time and will attack Superior. Here we go. Superior being challenged by the big and powerful Infernape. And Infernape does have another advantage other than being fire type. It has the item Metronome, which can get scary, especially for a grass type Pokemon. Starting it off, Superior is faster, goes for the slam, but misses. That could be massive, as Infernape just flame wheels. And one more flame wheel will end it in the burn. Bro, Superior never had a shot. Okay, turn two. Superior goes for Magical Leaf, and wow. That did nothing. Infernape follows it up with a Flame Wheel, and Superior drops. That is now the fourth Grass-type Pokemon in a row to get eliminated. And we are down to six Pokemon remaining. Next up, after Meowskarada's tough fight, it does decide to leave its area, traveling completely up north joining both Cinderace and Blastoise, and marking off one of the remaining areas, leaving just three more lands that the Pokemon can stand on. And then Skeledurge decides, let's make that be two remaining. Skeledurge flees to the east, joining Meowskaratus, Cinderace, and Blastoise. Now, there are just two spots remaining. And I think one Pokemon wants their revenge. For Alligator is upset that Infernape attacked one of its allies, betraying Infernape. And now we have a battle for Alligator versus Infernape. The third battle of day six is about to begin. We have Infernape versus For Alligator. For Alligator has the type advantage, but Infernape does have that metronome item that could do something, maybe. Starting us off, Infernape's going to go for the Mach Punch. That did not do much at all. And Feraligator's going to respond with a weak water gun that does do a lot more damage. Turn to Infernape. Goes for the Flame Wheel. Maybe a burn? No burns. Feraligator goes for water gun again. Infernape is getting very, very low. Might be it for Infernape. It goes for the Mach Punch. Still very minimal damage. And Feraligator responds with an Ice Fang. Also very minimal damage. Maybe the last turn again. Infernape Mach punches. Slightly more damage, but was it too late? It was indeed. Infernape goes down. For Alligator gets its revenge for the Fallen Superior. And another Pokemon drops, leaving there just five Pokemon remaining. With just two more Pokemon left to make its turn. First off, we have Blastoise, who is going towards the Bloodshed, joining Feraligator up north. Getting away from the big, crowded area. And to finish off Day 6, Cinderace is going to make an alliance with either Skeletor or Meowskarada. And Cinderace chooses to pair with Meow. And that wraps up Day 6. Two areas left on the map remain. Five Pokemon remaining for Alligator, Blastoise, Cinderace, Skeledurge, Meowskarada. Who will survive after the next day? Day 7. We are down to the final push. Just five Pokemon remain. They are all level 50. Two spots. Who will outplay them all and win everything? Just going to have to see how this day goes. Starting us off, we have Blastoise fleeing again. Rejoining the three down here. Could get messy. Next up, we have Meowskarada choosing to form an alliance. This could be massive for Meowskarada. You get a good alliance here. You could survive even longer. Meowskarada is going to choose Skeledurge, the two fire-type Pokemon in the area. Smart plays. Now, we have a fight. Cinderace is choosing to fight 
one of the three mons in the area. With Meowskarada being an alliance, Cinderace ends up fighting Blastoise. Is that a bad decision? We're going to have to find out. The first fight of day seven, did Cinderace make a huge mistake going after Blastoise? The answer is probably yes, but maybe Cinderace could pull off something. Starting it off, Cinderace goes for the headbutt. There could be flinches. There's not. Blastoise goes for Hydro Pump. But Cinderace lives. Whoa. Cinderace lives that. Next up, Cinderace is going to go for the bounce. It's going to survive one extra turn. There is a paralysis chance. Blastoise misses the Zen headbutt, but that does not matter. Cinderace is barely holding on. Goes for the bounce, hoping for the paralysis. It does not get it. Blastoise misses the hydro pump. Cinderace is still in this fight. Oh boy, Cinderace goes for the headbutt. Flinches? No flinches. Blastoise goes for the ice beam. It connects, and Cinderace falls. But the fighting does not end there. Skeledurge wants in on the action. Will it fight Blastoise as well, or will it go after its ally, Meowskarada? Skeledurge decides to take on its ally, Meowskarada. Oh boy. Here we go, battle time. Meowskarada does actually have an item advantage, a secondary typing advantage with its dark type, and the speed advantage. So there's a shout. But Skeledurge overall is technically at an advantage, but I'm not sure. Starting it off, Meowskarada goes for the Night Slash. That does big damage. I think Meowskarada, if it lives this, wins. It does not live that. A critical hit might have just saved Skeledurge and guaranteed its survival into the next round. Wow. Wow. Okay, Meowskarada has been eliminated, but Skeledurge, can you even beat the two water types standing in your way? We have one more move left of day seven, and that is for Alligator fleeing, or shall I say rejoining the rest of them all in one. Causing us to go down to just one area remaining with three Pokemon left to fight. Tomorrow will be the last day. One whole week of the Pokemon Hunger Games has gone by, leading to this very moment. Three Pokemon remain. The order matters a ton. And it is going to be Skeledurge. Skeledurge is going to have to take on both water types for any chance of winning. And Skeledurge's first opponent is going to be... For Alligator. We're having the two Alligators go at it. Blastoise is guaranteed a spot in the final two. Here we go. The battle for the final two for Alligator. Type advantage versus Skeledurge who I would say has a moveset advantage. For Alligator, still rocking with Water Gun, so this might be anyone's. Starting us off, For Alligator goes for Crunch. That didn't do too much. Skeledurge, do you have a chance? Torch Song, got to set up. Didn't do much damage, but long term. Special attack boost. Maybe this is Skeledurge's fight. Here we go, For Alligator. Like I said, Water Gun. That did very little. Could Skeledurge pull this off? That's huge damage. Skeledurge might lift a crunch still, bearing, like, critical hits. Maybe the last turn for Alligator goes for Water Gun. Skeledurge lives and goes for the Shadow Ball. And for Alligator has been eliminated. Just two Pokemon remain. Skeledurge versus Blastoise will be our final fight of Pokemon Hunger Games. The final fight. Can the OG Turtle prove that the original starters were the best? Or will Skeledurge, fighting through all odds, be able to win this match? 
Blastoise probably has one move that could end it all, and Ice Beam is not it. Because that does nothing. Skeleturge is going to respond with a Hyper Voice. Really not doing much. Blastoise is very tanky. Next up, Blastoise is going to go for a Zen Headbutt. Still not much damage, but the flinch could be massive. As long as Blastoise gets off that one move, it should have the game. Here we go again. Another Zen Headbutt. Still not much damage, and Skeletor gets an attack off Flamethrower. No burn. Oh boy. They are all very, very close. And here's the move Hydro Pump! It connects! And Skeletor goes down. Causing Blastoise to be the champion of the Pokemon Hunger Games.